Yeah. So, Jinyi, given um, the specs of this particular amorphous module, how do you determine the fill factor? Well, Vince, um, the fill factor by definition is the product of the maximum current times by the, pro the maximum voltage at the maximum point divided by the product of the short circuit current and the open circuit voltage. So to illustrate that, we can simply draw uh, an RV curve, which on the x-axis, we have the voltage measuring volts. And on the y-axis, we have the current, which measure in amps. A typical RV curve of a PMIT module will probably look something like this where at the very far end, when it reaches a zero current, which will be the open circuit voltage, VOC. And when the voltage is equal to zero, that gives the short circuit current, ISC. And to determine the power, um, the maximum point power, we can simply, it will be somewhere around here, which gives you the current at the maximum power point and also the voltage at the maximum power point. So the area underneath this curve that gives you the maximum power that can be produced by this particular module. Mm -hmm. But we also have a virtual line here which is the product of the short circuit current and the open circuit voltage. You're looking at a ratio of the, max, the area underneath the maximum um, power point curve over this area, dotted line here. And to find the a number, the fill factor, simply we just sub in value, substitute the value. And we were given that the maximum current is about 2.4 amps times the maximum voltage at 16.6 and over the short circuit current at 2.5. The short circuit current at 2.59 amps times by the open circuit voltage at 22.2. And that should give you roughly around 0 0.7. What this means is the fill factor typically measures the quality of a module. OK, so um, I was also wondering, what are the different components of the IV curve for a module? OK, um, yeah. That's a very good question, Vince. Um, so for this particular module, we've obviously, in the previous part, we draw a very rough sketch of the RV curve. So to be more specific, firstly, we need to draw the two axes, which to emphasize again that we have the vertical axis that represent the current in amps, and the x-axis in voltage, which measure in volts. So firstly, we need to find what is the um, short circuit current. So we can, that's where the voltage equal to zero. We can identify a point around there, which from the specs, that's going to be equal to 2.59 amps. And the second point we need to find is the open circuit voltage. This is where the um, current equal to zero, so just along the x-axis, which in this particular spec, we have 22.2 volts. Another very interesting point we need to find is the, both the current and the voltage at the maximum power point. So to identify this point, we're already given that the maximum 
um, the current at the maximum power point is 2.41 and also the, the voltage at the maximum power point is 16.6. .6. So on the IV curve, it's roughly around this location here. So all do we all we do now is join these three dots together. And that gives the IV curve of this particular module. So um Jinyi, would you be able to show me what this particular curve would look like under five hundred watts per meter squared irradiance as opposed to standard test conditions? Sure, Vinks. So this this IV curve we drew previously is under the standard test condition at solar irradiance, um, solar irradiance of 1,000 watts per meter square and the temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So when the solar irradiance reduced by 250, 500 watts per meter square, which is directly 50%, the current of the um, PV module also reduced proportionally. So the short circuit current of the new IV curve will be somewhere around 1.3 amps. But the voltage is stay um, the same, so the open circuit voltage will remain at 22.2 volts. When the, um, at the maximum power point of this curve, the current at the maximum power point also reduced by half, which we have the new current at the maximum power point to be 1.2 amps. But the voltage remain the same at 16.6. .6. So we can easily identify this point by tracing it down and also on the vertical axis around here. And all, do, all we do now is join the curve together. That will give you the IV curve roughly around when the solar irradiance reduced from the standard test condition to um, the 500 watts per meter square. All right, so um, what we have are two identical modules, each with a short circuit current of 3 amps and uh, an open circuit voltage of 18 volts and a fill factor of 0.75. Um, can you draw me a diagram of the two? The two are they? Are they? Are these connected in series or in parallel? Okay, let's have a look. Now the question tells us the short circuit current and the open circuit voltage. That's under standard test conditions. And here's our two modules. Now every solar module. Is positive and negative like that connection. This module that we're, this array, sorry, the two modules are connected so that um, the negative of one module is connected to the positive of the other module and then got a load resistance. Yeah, there we go. So that tells us that this is connected in series. All right, so how would you draw um, the individual IV curve and then the combined IV curve of these two? All right, so when we have the individual IV curve, we're told we have three amps at short, this is current up here, and so the short circuit current, that's the current at zero volts, is three amps. We're told that the, on the voltage axis, 
that the open circuit voltage is 18 volts and very approximately the curve will look like that. The fill factor tells us that this is the voltage at maximum power point multiplied by the current at maximum power point, that's this position here, divided by the VOC times ISC is 0.7, what was the number? 0.75. 0 0.75, so that's the fill factor. So that's what we've got. Now, so that's what an unshaded solar module will look like. So what will the two of them look like together? Okay, is that right? So we need to know what the two... Okay, so let's go now with two. So when we have... We'll draw in series. When we're in series, we add the voltages together at the same current. Current must be the same. So in series, current in each module is the same. Add voltages. Okay, so to do that, Let's have a look. Again, we've got current, voltage. We'll draw module number one. There's our standard module, slightly different scale now, 18 volts. And we'd have module number two would be exactly the same, is our assumption. But as we add two of them together, we say, well, all right, let's start at open circuit voltage. At the same current, current of zero, we add the voltages. So we've got two modules in series. Voltages add. We have 36 volts for the uh, whole module. Sorry, for the array, the two modules together. Um, as we go up the curve here, at each value of current, we simply add the voltage for each module together and we will essentially be doubling the voltage. And so we go up and get eventually here we'll have the same for the same current at short circuit current, for example, conditions we have voltage zero, same current, add the voltages, zero plus zero. That's our short circuit current of our combined. So here's the combined IV curve of two modules. Here's the single module. So that's the ideal. So um, my other question then is if you were to shade one cell of this module by 50%, how would that affect this particular IV curve? Okay, so if just one cell is shaded, all of these cells, we're not showing all the cells, but they would be connected in series, something approximately like that. Because each cell is connected in series to the next one, if we shade the one cell by 50%, then we will then limit the current through the whole series connection. So Roughly, we will see 50% of 3 amps will have 1.5 amps short circuit current. And the open circuit voltage, well, it'll be a bit less than 18 volts, but approximately 18 volts. Voltage is very slowly changing in comparison to current. Current can change by a big amount. Voltage will change uh, much less. So that's what it'll look like. And so if I was to shade an entire row of these cells in the module by 50%, how would that affect that same curve that you've just drawn? Okay, so if we, same, 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 if we had 50% sh 
shading on a cell or 50% shading of a string, all the cells connected in a string like this one was shaded by 50%, we would have the same IV curve um, reducing the current by half for the whole string and therefore because the rest of the cells in the module are connected in series, the whole module will be reduced by 50%. Okay, so um, my next situation is what would happen to the IV curve if just one cell was shaded by 50% for these two modules together? Okay, so what happens then is that we have our IV curves now look like this. We have one module here. that is unshaded. So on its own it has 3 amps and 18 volts open circuit voltage and for the shaded module it's shaded 50% just on one cell we'll have 1.5 amps for the shaded module. Now it's open circuit voltage will be a bit less than 18 volts but something close to that. So the two curves look like that. Uh, sh the unshaded and shaded. And I think your question was what happens when they're when they connected in series? Yeah. Yeah. So let's do that. So then we just do the same as we did before. We simply say at the current, current must be the same, they're connected in series, we add the voltages. So we add this together and get something like 36 volts will be the open circuit voltage of the combination and we just simply go up in current and keep adding the voltages. And so the curve looks something like this. Now when we reach this point here, actually I should put a bit more of a knee of the curve in there. I'll draw that again. When we have the two modules together in series, we look at the same current, we add the voltages, so we'll get an open circuit voltage of about 36 volts. And as we go up in current, we add the voltages. And then as we reach this point here, we start to see that the current of the shaded module will be limited to something close to one and a half amps. So that means that this unshaded module cannot go up in current because it's being limited by the current of the shaded module and so this module will sit at this point and we simply then say when we add the two together we'll get a curve that looks like that and that will then give us the combined IV curve.